Hi, and welcome to Hoxton Therapy. This is a narration of one of our articles. Frontal lobe causes anxiety, depression, and heart disease, new study finds. There is no argument that millions of people are affected by depression and anxiety, prominent mental health disorders affecting at least more than 300 million people globally. Strangely, there is little we know about these disorders. Aside from that, we don't fully understand the brain areas responsible for anxiety and depression and their differing symptoms for sufferers. As far as we know, the frontal lobe, which is part of the brain's frontal lobe, depicts activity changes in people's struggling with depression and anxiety. The areas responsible for cognition and emotional regulation are usually unexcited areas, whereas other areas responsible for gathering emotions and bodily reactions are overexcited and overactive. A basic region which has shown overactivity in depressed and anxious people is the subgenial anterior cingulate cortex, SGACC, involved in emotional responses, responses or behaviours. Neuroimaging studies have, over the time, only shown a correlation between depression, anxiety and SGACC, but we do not, but do not tell if the overactivity or excitation of SGACC causes depression and anxiety symptoms. However, a new, re- new research has discovered that the overactivity of SGACC causes depression and anxiety symptoms. The new research employed marmosets, primate animal, as subjects of experiment. Marmosets were used because of their brain composition similarity with that of humans. In the study, it was found that overactivity in the SGACC region caused common symptoms of mood and anxiety disorders. More importantly, their reaction to threats. Marmosets' reaction to threat is important in the study since anxious and depressed people tend to negatively perceive and react to threatening situations. To overstimulate the SGACC cannula, tiny hollow tubes were implanted into the marmoset's brains. Then, a small quantity of drugs was infused into the SGACC to increase the excitability. These drugs won't disrupt the functionality of other regions of the brain, just the SGACC. Small wireless devices were implanted into the artery to measure both the blood pressure and the heart rate. Before overactivating the SGACC, the marmosets were first conditioned to associate a tone to the presence of a rubber snake or threat. Usually marmosets see snakes as threats. After pairing snakes with marmosets, the subjects displayed high emotional responses, fear, and high blood pressure to the sound of the tone. Then the pairing, or association, was deconditioned by continuously presenting the noise without the presence of the snake. This allowed the researchers to measure how quickly the marmosets regulated fear responses with or without the AG, sorry, the SGACC overstimulation. When the marmosets SGACC is not activated, they gradually regulate their responses to the threats within minutes when they hear just the tone, but not the rubber snake. Over the, on the contrary, when the marmosets A- SGACC is activated, with the tone and the snake present, they show fearful emotional responses and much more higher levels of blood pressure. The marmosets were also anxious around other types of threats, such as presence of strange humans. This showed they no longer reduce or regulate their threat responses. In line with previous studies, inability to regulate one's emotion is prevalent among people suffering from depression and anxiety. Therefore, the recent study builds on literature suggesting that overactivity of SGACC mitigates anticipation and motivation for rewards similar to the inability to experience pleasure and inadonia, as seen in cases of depression. The study concluded that overactivity or overact or overactivation of SGACC can cause the symptoms of depression and anxiety, such as negative effect, stroke, emotion, and lack of pleasure, heart disease, and depression. The other category we we are concerned about is that why people with depression have a higher risk of cardiovascular problems like heart disease. Although lifestyle, behavioural and socioeconomic factors are strong explanations, the recent study examined whether SGACC overactivity could affect cardiovascular functioning. That This was tested because the heart is connected to the brain brainstem, which is an area that regulates the heart rate and blood pressure. 
it is discovered that SGACC overexcitation did not only significantly increase the blood pressure of the mus marmosets when presented as a threatening stimuli, it increases the heart rate whilst also reducing the heart rate v variability when at rest. The heart rate variability explains how quickly the heart can adapt to various environmental changes, especially when dealing with cues associated with rewards and punishment. The findings cooperate with the findings in depression and anxiety studies, linked here. Increased heart rates and reduced heart variability imply that overactivity in the SGACC supports the body's response to fight or flight, emotions which, if persists for certain periods, often puts the heart under stress and may explain the prevalence of heart disease among people struggling with depression. Response to treatment in recent, in recent study, brain imaging response was also used to investigate other areas of the brain affected by SGACC overactivity when presented with threatening situations. Increased activity was discovered in two fundamental parts of the brain, the, amyg the amygdala and the hypothalamus, which are the brain's stress network. By comparison, reduced activity was, was detected in the lateral prefrontal cortex, an area regulating emotional responses. Previous research has shown that the, the lateral prefrontal cortex is underactive in depression. The changes were different from those found in overactivation during reward events. Ident identifying these differences may help us understand the type of treatment which will be most effective in treating symptoms of depression. Of of, of, in symptoms of patients. The results further led to investigation about why some certain individuals respond to drugs like antidepressants and why others don't. For example, antidepressants in selective reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, obviously more than one third of those who, uh, who take antidepressants report no significant Im improvement in symptoms, and this calls for a new treatment. Ketamine is another drug with promising results used in combining treatment-resistant depression, taking, taking effect in less than two hours to relieve depressive symptoms. Earlier study had shown ketamine effectiveness in treating antohenia after SGACC was overactivated. However, in this study, it was discovered that ketamine couldn't improve the anxiety levels of marmosets when presented with unfamiliar hormones. This shows that some levels of depression and anxiety symptoms react differently to various kinds of antidepressants or treatments, as shown in an instance, ketamine reversed andahenia, but on the other hand, did not reduce anxiety. Clearly, overactivation of the SGACC may likely be an underlying cause of depression and anxiety symptoms in people, while other areas may have altered activity in different brain regions associated with anxiety. There is still research needed regarding findings that different casualties of depression and anxiety and the kinds of treatments require to improve them. But this research indicates that for some sufferers of depression and anxiety, targeting overactivity of the, A of the SGACC may be efficient in alleviating their symptoms. Never act on any advice given in these articles, videos or audios. Always seek professional help before acting on anything you read or watch or listen to on this website or in our podcast or on our YouTube channel or anywhere on our social media.